Hey everyone, so today I wanted to show you guys how I edit my photos for Instagram or Facebook. Um, let's be real, every sort of beauty blogger or um, anyone that uploads beauty photos to the internet, um, most of them have been photoshopped. Um, so I, I wanted to show you guys how I do mine because um, it is a really useful skill to know. So the first thing I like to do in my actions, I have a what's called a frequency separation action. Um, that is to smooth out the skin. So I can do this manually, um, but I'm really lazy. So I like to have my action ready. So all I need to do is play that. Um, you want to set your blur no more than six. Well, as a general rule of thumb, you can use six if you like or more, um, but I find it's a little bit more natural if I sit anywhere between four and five. So I'm going to pick 4.7 pixels, press OK. Um, and then all of that set, if you wanted to have a look at that, scale to 2, offset to 128, opacity 100%. Your layer is the low layer, channel is the RGB layer. So just press OK, press OK again, and then it gives you this little folder here. Frequency separation, you want to open that, click on the low layer, and then you want to go to your patch selection tool. And this is what I do. So I highlight an area, you want to go filter, Gaussian blur. And that creates, see that blur there? It's very subtle, but it's just taking away um, the little bits of um, imperfection in my skin, so the pores and everything. So I like to do that all over my face, mainly just where my pores are. And I like to layer it up a little bit. You don't want to go over any areas that have details, so such as the eyes. Um, if you were to blur that, it would all look very, very unnatural. Do this little bit of hair here as well. Okay, so once you're sort of done with that, zoom out and have a bit of a look and see that everything's looking all right. You could do a little bit more, but you don't want to do do too much otherwise it can look a little bit unnatural so I'm pretty happy with that do a little bit on my nose cool now what I like to do I like to bunch that up again into its group um, if I'm happy with it um, I will group the background with the frequency separation action so we can create another background layer and we can merge it with that so now you have your frequency separation on a new background layer, not the original, because you don't want to distort the original layer. Um, if you make any mistakes, you can just delete that layer off. Um, so if you're doing everything on the background layer, you won't be able to use that sort of modification tool. Um, now, so once we've got frequency separation, we want to copy that because that's the background that we want to work with. And now I want to go in and just get rid of all of these little pores and stuff that the frequency separation didn't get rid of. So more colours rather than texture. Um, so we just go in, I have a lot of freckles, makeup sometimes doesn't cover it, which is fine. Um, but for the purpose of Instagram, I like to sort of just get rid of it. Um, and my terribly plucked eyebrows, which I won't pluck, so I just modify them <laughs> in Photoshop. Um, we can also get rid of this furry patch on my eyebrow. Just with the patch tool, it's just this one here. Um, you've got spot healing, healing brush tool, patch tool, that's the one that I use. So you're selecting an area and moving it to an area um, that is what you want to replicate. So you just have to find an area of skin that looks all right. So that's looking all right at the moment. Let's go up onto the forehead. We've got a few freckles and stuff here. All right. A little bit more up here. Cool. All right. Where else have we got? There's a red patch in my nose. You want to leave some texture, otherwise it can look really unnatural. Um, but I guess it's it's the style that you want to go for. If you want a really clean photo, um, well that's up to you. You can you can edit to your heart's content. But I like to have a little bit of color and texture in my skin. Um, Cool. Alright, um, so this this patch here, this big patch, 
where I haven't plucked my eyebrows. Um, ordinarily, I would like to get rid of that, um, but my hair's in the way, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, I would be using the clone tool, which is this one here, um, just to clone out those little areas um, in between the hairs, but I'm feeling lazy today, so we're not gonna do that. Um, also, these hairs here, if you carefully select them and bring them down, you are able to get rid of them. But because there's hairs there, like my head hairs, um, it does sort of get in the way. And if you're blocking out your head hairs, um, you've got, you know, hair and then a bare patch where you've cloned all it and then hair again, um, it can look a little bit sus. So um, if we just do it really carefully, see how it looks a bit funny? Um, there's hair and then there's no hair, but we can sort of fix that with the clone tool if we just pick up that hair and clone it back in. See, we've cloned back in that hair. Not very well done, mind you, um, but that's sort of, you, you understand the idea. Now, I do want to get rid of this patch here. So using the clone tool, which is what we've got here, we have to select an area of skin that we want to clone from. So here looks pretty good. And we're just going to draw over. Um, I do have my opacity to 100 and my flow to 100 as well. You can change that so it's not as obvious. Um, but I like to do it just like this. Cool. So you can see that that's sort of been modified. So I'm going to go over with my patch tool again. And I'm just going to select this browner area here where it's sort of picked up where I've drawn my eyebrows on and just move it to a clearer spot. Um, so it just sort of blends in with my forehead a little bit better. So that's looking... All right, actually, what's this dirty patch in my nose? Gross. Awesome, so that's a little bit better now. Right, so now that we've sort of got my skin cleaned up a little bit, um, we can copy this layer because it's the layer on top and that's the layer we want to work with. You can see the before and after there. Cool. Um, I'll drag that down, create a new layer, which is with this little icon here next to the rubbish bin. Um, so this is my second copy of the copy of the copy, if that makes any sense. So you want to use the layer that's on top because that's the layer that's going to show through. Um, if you then move the opacity, that will show the layer underneath. Um, I'll show you in a second. But what I'm going to do, um, just like when putting on makeup, I like to highlight and contour my face um, in Photoshop if it's not strong enough. Um, if I don't do my makeup strong enough or if it's sort of washed out with my light. So. Um, I like to take the dodge tool, which is your highlighter, I, I guess you could sort of call it. Um, make that one big, make the brush big. You use your um, funny bracket keys to make your brush bigger or smaller. That's how I do it anyway. Otherwise you can go up here and choose all your settings, hardness, size, um, different types of brushes. So I like to use a soft feathered brush. Um, looks a little bit more natural. So what I like to do is draw on where you would highlight on your actual face. Um, I like to do that with my dodge tool, dodge and burn. So a little bit of highlight on my cheekbone, do a little bit down there as well, maybe down my nose, on the tip of my nose, brow bone and inner corner. So that's what you would do with makeup anyway, um, you just need to replicate that. I also do like to lighten my eye a little bit, so just the bottom, just really gently, you don't want to go too crazy with that. But that just adds a little catch light, which looks nice. Cool, so now I want to take my burn tool, which is your contour, and just go over at the areas where you would normally contour on your face. So I don't like that, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, just go into your history and then down to your last action that you want to keep. Draw that on again. Now, this is going to look dark, and I'm going to fix it in a sec. So, down the cheekbone there, I do like to do my eyebrow. I'll do, uh, actually no, I don't want it in my crease, but I will do my black liner just to make that a little bit darker in the bottom. And I'll do my iris as well, uh, my pupil, sorry. Cool. Now that's looking pretty good. Now, if you have done your contour a little bit too dark, darker than you would usually, and I think my catch light is a little bit too, uh, so I'm going to take it down a little bit. So on the layer that you've done your contouring and highlighting, you want to take that down to where you think it's, it fits appropriately. So I reckon about there. Cool. A little bit of a difference, not too much, but it's enough. Um, if you're still not happy, you know, if you've taken down some, you know, your contour too much and your highlights gone, um, you can redraw that back in. So click on your layer again, 
and I've gone onto my dodge top and you can just do a little bit. It'll be subtle because you have now put the opacity to 52%. Um, so that means that this bottom layer is showing through and there's only 52% of that layer showing. Um, but that's looking pretty good for now. Cool, so now what I like to do, I like to go into this menu here. So this is like your um, adjustments layer, I suppose. So you go in here, click on that one and it pops up with this little menu. I always go to brightness and contrast first. I don't know why, it's just top of the list um, and I work systematically down. So I take my brightness and I pump that up just a touch. You don't want it too much, um, like you can really blow it out, but like mm, gross. That's like 2007 MySpace <laughs> phase. Um, so we want to do it, let's say nine. Nine's looking good. And then we can do the same with the contrast. You don't want it too crazy. For makeup, if it's just your eye, you could probably push it a little bit more. Um, but for this, because we do have my face and my hair, it can blow it out. See, if you're seeing up in sort of this area where my regrowth is coming through, it looks a little bit dirty and yellow if we pump up contrast too much. So we want it around here. Oh my God, I'm so sorry about Facebook. Um, Let's go, let's go two. I don't mind two actually, cool. We can always fix it later, that's no problem. So we go back in here again, and now the next thing I go to is curves. Um, now, you can change your curves in RGB, but what I like to do, and if you've looked at any of my photography work, you can definitely see it, there's a bit of a trend. Um, I go into this menu here, and I systematically go through blue, green, and red. Um, so I start with blue, and you can toggle up and down this way. So I tend to like cooler toned photos. Um, so I'm thinking about there, looks pretty good. Green will turn, if you go down the opposite way, will turn pink. If you go up this way, it goes green. Um, I'm liking, I'm liking that, that looks all right. And then we go into red. And I don't know if I really want any red in there. Maybe a little bit, cool. I like that. Now, if you do go into RGB, that is going to um, lighten the whole photo or darken the whole photo instead of playing with your colors. So if I just make a new curves layer, so you can build curves on top, on top of curves, on top of curves. Um, let's go RGB and I'll show you. So see how that's darkening your shadows and lightening your shadows. And then we've got here as well, which will blow out your highlights or darken them. Um, so that's a really handy tool if you want to sort of separate your face from the background. I'm just going to pump it up a little bit. Just a hair. And even if you're not happy um, with what you've done, you can also adjust the opacity of these layers. Um, so let's bring that down to 38. So it's just a slight difference. Cool. Alrighty. So I think that's about it. Um, I'll go ahead and watermark this one and then I'll be uploading onto Instagram. Thanks for watching, guys.